Okay, this is from the book uh, Holy Grail of Wisdom Quotes by me, Pete Rogers. We're now moving into the letter C, and the first author is Thomas Cahill. Thomas Cahill wrote the book. It's a great book, How the Irish Saved Civilization. So what that's all about is during the collapse of the Roman Empire, literacy was lost. People who spoke Latin were almost, you know, they were fluent in literate Latin had diminished. People who could translate the Greek had diminished. So the Irish, you know, Irish people, they say there's drinkers and thinkers, and the thinkers really liked books, and there were a whole bunch of Irish monks who remembered that uh, St. Patrick had converted the Irish to Catholicism, um, and they really liked books, and they went around in their little places, and they translated a lot of the books. I've made videos about this before. About I did a book review of Thomas Cahill's book, How the Irish Saved Civilization, and I talked about some of the different monks who were pretty famous, like in the, the Bible of Kells and whatnot. Okay, but anyways, here's the quotes from... Um, Thomas Cahill, if there are no books, there is no civilization. You know, barbarians don't have literature. Okay, he continues, Whenever, wherever they went, the Irish brought with them their books, many unseen in Europe for centuries, and they tied them to their waists as a sign of triumph. Um, they also brought their love of learning and their skills in bookmaking. In the bays and valleys of their exile, they reestablished literacy and breathed new life into Europe. And that is how the Irish saved civilization. And he continues, Augustine was one of the last Romans with a classical arts education. His Confessions was the first self-conscious autobiography and is the father of the novel. The Aeneid is what so inspired Augustine. The Aeneid is really a trilogy, a continuation of the Iliad and the Odyssey. The Aeneid begins with the Trojan horse, and Virgil says, beware of Greeks even when bearing gifts. So that was sort of a big thing in Rome, that they saw the Greeks as being very smart and creative, but they also saw them as being kind of sneaky. Um, Dido, to some extent, was like an exotic woman like Cleopatra, and despite her beauty and the Aeneas affair with her, it was seen as essential that Aeneas had to leave her. I still remember that. I was a freshman in college. I went to Stanford back in the 1980s, back when they still had an entire year of classes all about Western civilization. It was a requirement, and it was a great class. It was actually like my favorite class at Stanford. I still remember how sad it was when Dido, Dido and Aeneas broke up, and then she committed suicide. It was all sad. Um, but it was good that they had that class. You know, Western civilization unites the population as things they can all agree on, shared stories and idioms um, and a shared literacy level. So anyways, and then that was a Jesse Jackson came in a couple years later and he said the hey-ho, Western Civ has got to go. So sort of a destroyer of Western civilization. And the sad thing about destroying Western civilization is there is nothing to replace it. Whenever you replace it, what do you get? You end up with, you know, third world barbarism and just anarchy, chaos, and degenerate behavior. There's nothing to replace it. Okay, there's no comparable civilization. There's no comparable literature. There's no comparable art tradition or music tradition. Please, Western civilization is the best civilization by far, and there's nothing even comparable. Um, if you think otherwise, put it in the comments. I'll be happy to look at it. I've been doing this for a long time. I've never seen anything in its ballpark. Okay, he continues now. Virgil was the great writer and poet of Latin, the Latin equivalent of the Greek Homer. Virgil was saying that Pius Aeneas was superior morally and dutifully to the sneaky, sneaky Greeks. Cahill also said that Cicero was to Latin what Demosthenes was to Greece, a great political speaker. Augustine loved Cicero almost as much as Virgil. Skill with words was more appreciated in those days because society was more dependent on oratory. Cahill says that Cicero, like a modern Dale Carnegie, uh, was like a modern Dale Carnegie who also tried to be likable. You know, that's a great book, you know, How to Win Friends and Influence People. All teenagers should read that book. Uh, Barbarians do not have literature. Without the Irish monks, many of the great classical books from ancient Greece and ancient Rome uh, might have disappeared and be lost to civilization. And a lot of stuff did get lost. For example, a lot of the the books of Aristotle. We've got Plato was much better about having his books saved for posterity than was Aristotle. And Aristotle was much smarter than Plato. Okay, civilization requires people to have some leisure time and confidence that it's uh, worth continuing to study all these books. Okay, Plato was a bit of a verbose mystic, even though he's still great. All right, so that's it for Thomas Cahill. We'll do one more with this session. We'll also do Augustus Seaver, you know, Octavian, Octavianus, 
Okay, so he was adopted by Julius Caesar he posthumously in his will, and then he sort of restored, restored Rome to unify it, you know, and he had to fight with um, Mark Anthony and Pompey. So Octavian was not as good of a general, but his friend Marcus Agrippus was a great general. And conversely, Marcus Agrippus was sort of awkward socially, but Octavian was brilliant socially. Octavian emphasized to all Romans what a jerk Mark Anthony had been for being, uh, you know, whipped by uh, Cleopatra and giving away Roman land to the Egyptians. So the whole story of Mark Anthony and Cleopatra is one of the most uh, pathetic, you know, what whipped guys that ever lived. You know, she basically turned away while they're in the middle of a naval conflict and the disaster. And Cleopatra sort of abandoned him and, and in the long run weakened herself by so doing, I think. Okay, this turned Rome against Anthony. And even though Anthony on papyrus seemed more powerful than Octavian, this po his popular support, uh, because of this, it gave Octavian the edge. So Augustus has a few quotes. It wasn't that uh, verbal. He said, I found Rome a city of bricks and left it a city of marble. If you want a rainbow, you will have to deal with the rain. Quintilius Varus, give me back my legions. The uh, Quintilius Varus had ventured into the forest and he got his butt kicked by the Germans um, and lost a bunch of legions for Augustus. He was not happy about that. So anyways, that's it for the quotes today. Um, and uh, we'll leave it at that. hope that was uh, useful to you.